on Facebook. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we're live now. <laughs> oh, good. Say hey. Hey, this is uh, Lynn. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Linda West with Living Live. And today I'm, you know, Michelle, I never asked you how to say your last name. I say Maddich. It is Maddich, like a Maddich. <gasps> yeah. Oh my gosh. Perfect. I'm so good. I got that, got that right. <laughs> I'm excited You're perfect. to be here with yes. Michelle Maddich. And you guys, we're going to be talking about something that I don't know anything about this at all, which is kind of cool because I'm going in totally 100% blind, ignorant, and you name it. And I'm excited to learn what this is, this new 5D earth. Now, Michelle's the first one I ever heard of it from, so I don't even know what it is. So I'm excited again to share with you guys what this is all about and like how it affects us or how it can affect us, how we can take advantage of it and all that stuff. So Michelle is, let me see, I have her bio here. So Michelle has a wide variety of supernatural spiritual gifts, which include, don't, this isn't inclusive, but include things like the visual 5D. She's a clairvoyant. She's a medium, medical intuitive. She has um, spirit guides who tune her, tune her into future events and help her to access other spirit guides. And um, yeah, she has so much stuff. The new 5D Earth, astro travel, reincarnate, incarnate, third eye, remote, remote viewer. I don't even know what half that stuff means, Michelle. So welcome to the show. I'm excited to have you here. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. You're the best. You're just the best. Um, well, I want you to explain to us first, like what, what is 5D and then how did you know that that's what it was? Like, how'd you discover this? Sure. Um, well, about three and a half years ago, I went into an awakening. And so everything that I've learned about the new 5D planet that we are ascending into is all from experiences from my spirit guides and from, um, I mean, obvious, um, obvious things are playing out on the planet that help us all to connect with the 5D earth. 5D earth is about us awakening to our true power, awakening to the truth behind who we are as earth. And we've been told many things about how our planet should be. And in 3D, we were shown a structure and it was a lot of war and a lot of fighting and a lot of we, we don't have enough. So we have to fight for our, our resources. And the new 5D Earth is about understanding that we have abundance of everything. That as a consciousness as a whole, our entire planet uniting can actually bring us water. I mean, the amount of things that we have the power to do, if we connect with each other as a whole, we, we literally can impact the planet greatly. Um, 5D Earth is, Mother Earth has been on a, she spins and, and she's been on this shift. So she's going through a bipolar, uh, a bipolar shift that is affecting all of us a lot of people are waking up to who they truly are many of us are we've been here many times for for myself I've been here many times before and it has allowed me to connect with um the beauty behind the energy that we can connect with um for example when I started seeing in 5d and I started seeing energy so I actually see energy and sound frequencies and I can see people's auras it's allowed me to understand the many dimensions of our planet and the many opportunities that we have to help heal each other oh, so a lot of people will I want to ask you a question sure. about that before you go on because aura and stuff I, I hear about that and I myself don't um, see that I don't think, you know, maybe I do and I don't know it. Right. So that could be something, right. but, um, do you ever see bad aura and you see good aura? Like, what do you, what do you see? Um, yeah, I do see, I mean, experiencing 5d earth to the level that I have, I see everything and I see, um, the yin and the yang, the dark and the light, uh, and the contrast of it all. And I really embrace all of that. I know that anyone who has darker auras are usually people who have unforgiveness and stuff from their past that they need to work through. So I see everyone as a healing, somebody to be healed if they're not shining a bright mm -hmm. light or many colors. You have always had a very yellow and very white or you're very pure very positive um but you and most people actually this is the fun part about us is you probably if i taught you next time we're together if i taught you kind of to stand back and see you usually can see little auras around people 
people's hands or energy, you wouldn't see it to the level that I see it. However, you would be able to at least see that little white light of energy around most people. Okay. But yeah, I, um, I do see darker, um, spirits and darker energies. And I just, you know, I've realized that in this time of work that I do in many dimensions of work, um, I also help to have people reach forgiveness in other dimensions. So for example, I did a reading with a woman who lost her, her best friend to um, her husband killed her. They wanted a divorce. That's beside the point. So that when I connected with this female who passed away, my friend's friend, her, the husband came as well. And he was a very dark spirit. And I saw him with my third eye and I saw him and immediately my spirit guides let me know you can, can he be forgiven? Can you help move him into the light? And I, I was like, wait, what? And so they, they explained to me that my purpose is to actually receive these darker energies and transition them into the light. Because in order for earth to be healed, we have to heal many dimensions of energies and, and beings that are supporting us in this awakening process. So then immediately I had Archangel Michael show up and David, they said, David from the Bible, I don't make these things up. My spirit guides chime me in and I can see them with my third eye. And all of a sudden this darker spirit, this older, um, older man who killed his wife, he actually started turning into the light and, and he, it was just the most beautiful thing. And so then it was just, yeah, that was the most amazing experience that I've received so far about transitioning darker energies into the light. When that, when something like that happens, so has that only happened once the first that, that you have that, had that experience? Yeah, this, this, so this just recently happened in the last like two months. Okay. And, um, before this, it seems like my guides kind of take, give me what I can receive at the time. So it's been almost, mm. I've, I've had gifts. My mom said I've been very gifted with different things my whole life, but I've really chimed in several years ago, but they only give me what I can receive. So if I, when I first chimed in, they're like, oh, by the way, you're responsible for moving darker spirits into the light. I'd, I'd be so lost. So they waited several years to let me know that that was part of my duties. Wow, that's really cool. And that's like, just like anything, right? The, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And it's the reality is that yes. the teacher is always there, but the student's not ready to receive it yet. And so it's the same thing with you. It's just in a different something, you know, something different than we're used to, you know, talking about the, the 5D earth. So is it the 5D? Oh, hey, say hi to a uh, happy Ron and to Keith. Hi. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Keith, go and share hi, this out. Yeah, because this this is very interesting, um, very interesting topic. And question though, Michelle, has the five D Earth been here forever, and we're just now tapping into it? You're just now tapping into it, or is it? Because you did call it the new five D Earth. So, is it? Yeah. You know my question. <laughs> Yeah. Is, um, is it new to us? It, we weren't ready for it before. So we, because of our f f wars and our consciousness, not being to the level that we have it now, I mean, science is proving like before, back in the day, you ask the scientists, if you believe in God, they would say no way. Nowadays you ask scientists, you believe in God. They say, I'm a scientist. Of course I do. So there's a lot of mm. things that we've tapped in with technology and all of the advancements of our species that yes, we're finally ready. So mother earth is actually, um, um, when I went through my awakening and I saw the energy from the planets and these different, um, I mean, you'll, you'll hear the story more of my awakening where we're writing a book and doing different stuff with that. But for now, um, when I awesome. saw the energy coming down from the different planets and from the stars, literally we can reach out to our universe to help us with energy and energy is what helps cure our medical issues and all of these different things. So we weren't quite ready for 5d earth before mother earth had to get abused. Basically, this is how I say it. We had to abuse mother earth. We had to take all the oil. We had to get all the resources and we had to do all of these things to allow us to understand and come to the consciousness that we can now learn to fill a car with water. They're, t they're learning all these new techniques by just, um, allow we wouldn't have been able to reach this level of consciousness without going down that other path. And so I'm mm -hmm. just so excited because this new 5D earth is where we all come every issue on the planet isn't something to point at and talk crap about it's about like how can we help this what can we do and so you see all of these beings coming together and wanting to impact the planet and my spirit guide said don't try to change the planet try to embrace the planet it's not our responsibility to change it this is god's bigger plan 
Well, I love that. And, um, you know, Keith asked, how is it possible to remove a dark stigma that often follows me around? So I have this question, hmm. Keith, if you would like to join us live, you know, Michelle is open to having people come on and join us live. If you are open to doing that, I just posted a link um, in the comments there. Click that link. And if you can't click it, go ahead and copy it and paste it to a different browser and come join us. Now, if you do that, Keith, you have to um, turn off your Facebook volume. Otherwise, we'll get all this feedback. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time. So Linda. You, yes. Go ahead. How did you choose your shirt today? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, how did I choose? Well, I had a different shirt on. I had a purple shirt on, but it was like a t-shirt and I don't usually wear t-shirts on my show. So, uh, I opened up my closet and I just put this shirt on. It didn't, did it jump out at me? Oh, you know what? I chose there are two, two I looked at. This is a great, I love this question. I don't know why you're asking, but I can't wait to find out why. Okay. So there were two I was looking at. One okay. was more blue and then one was this one, which is like a green and black. And the more blue one has like sparklies on it. And I just didn't feel like wearing that one today. I felt like wearing this one. So now tell me why you asked that question. I can't wait to hear this. Well, if, if you have, you ever seen the flower of life or any of those, um, it sacred geometry. Uh -uh. It kind of reminds me of like the DNA strands and kind of what I see in space with the electricity and how it connects to that's kind of what I see. So when I tapped into the blue matrix and I call it the blue matrix because I see the matrix of our planet, I can manipulate in, in a positive way. I hate that word manipulation because I don't the universe totally knows agree. that my intention yeah. is always pure, but I manipulate the energies in the stuff to actually to heal my body. So I do Reiki and these different magical things, but that it just is a perfect shirt for today. I just, it's just perfect. So that's so funny. I thought you were yeah. going to tell me like it has special powers to it. And that's why I'm well, so you, excited. you have special powers, my friend, you have special powers. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Well, so Keith, if you do want to hop on, you know, do that, but otherwise I guess we'll go to the question. So the question is, how is it possible to remove a dark stigma that often follows me around? You know what I, I tell everyone, life is either love or it's a call to love. And this has to do with mm. everything. So most likely that thing following you around is usually craving love. I'm not saying that wow. that's what you should provide, but usually what I ask is, are you okay? Can Because I have, I channel. So I actually have spirits enter me completely and I can feel it. And, and if they're sick, I take up their sickness. And I, I've been in and out of the hospital my whole life. Now I understand I'm a channeler. Many people who are ill are channeling spirits and other things that are actually the reasoning for. So I immediately, when I ever have one come near me or anything come into me, I immediately just ask like, are you okay? How can I help you? You know, mm -hmm. I love you. Like I usually just kill it with kindness and kill it with love. Um, immediately I've had transition where they just literally will turn to light. Like that's all they wanted to know is that somebody's cares. And also you can say you, that's the other part of this planet is we need to recognize our power. You can also say, I'm not interested in having you here right now. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you leaving. I believe it was Jesus who said, um, you know, turn the other cheek. There's certain things that in the teachings of, I just opened the Bible for the first time at 33, but there's little things that Jesus said that I'm like, he was a genius at energy. That guy was a genius at energy working and at, and spiritual working when he had the people boot the guys, like all the different things that Jesus did. He was a master at this planet. He was a master at the universe, but the he really knew how to understand that we are all designed in pure love form. It's, mm -hmm. and, and now we're moving into this new 5d earth that as we come together, it's where we really heal. So I would just say, ask, ask any sort of spirit or being, you know, how can I help you? What's going on? You know, or just, I'm not interested in having you here. You can go. I've come home to my house before and I've had all sorts of weird energy. And I say, you guys can go now. You know, it, oh, it's gosh. just, it's, it's your responsibility to just say, Hey, you got to go. This is my I'm space. I'm going to tell you a story about that. But in the meantime, but first of all, I'm going to bring Keith up because he was able to connect. Awesome. So, oh, so we're bringing up Keith Russell. Keith Russell. Hello, uh, Keith. Hey. So um, let's see. Do you have your Facebook turned on? If you do, go ahead and, and mute it or turn your Facebook off. Oh, he disappeared. I'm not sure he went. But I'm going to tell you just a really quick story. When my mom passed cool. away, um, my mom, my husband and I watched Wheel of Fortune every single day before she passed away. And then when she passed away, we, I was walking through the living room 
and the TV turned on. It wasn't on before, but the TV mm. turned on and it was Wheel of Fortune. So I didn't think anything of it because I thought, oh, it must have already been on and I just didn't notice it. So I turned it off. A week later, the same exact thing happened. And I was like, I know it wasn't on, but maybe it was. So I turned it off. And then it happened about two months later. And I said, I said, mom, I know that's you. I know you're messing around with me. Everything is okay. <laughs> you can leave now. And it hasn't happened since. And yeah. like, I didn't know what I really believed or not, you know, but when that happened and then she hasn't been back since then, it's almost as if like, I it was kind of like that validation that she was here and she was messing with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And right when you started talking about her, my vibration right here in Minnesota uh, changed. So she's very present. I mean, her energy of that's, that's the confirmation. When I get a vibrational, whoop, whoop, it kind of lets me know that you're right. So when people lie to me, I'm like, rit, rit, and I'm like, oh, I know they're lying. So, but when you're sharing your story immediately, that was a yes. That's exactly what happened. So your oh, mom okay. definitely was. Yeah. And, um, um, oh, see my, I just, got cleared um yeah so that's definitely what happened we lost him didn't we we did and then he's trying to come back i'm going to bring him back and see if it, it's because it's kind of like shaking it's got this there weird thing going on smell. over there there he is he's back but he's like so is that the thing he's carrying around with him the dark stigma michelle you can see that on the well, screen surprisingly it, right well actually it's interesting you say that because uh, when we are we all have nanotechnology that's something i share about my awakening but we all have this, we're moving into the age of transhumanism. So somebody as um, digitally connected as, for example, that I have become, I can go into people's homes and interrupt their uh, internet. I've gone in, I've connected, I've walked next to someone and shut their Bluetooth down and people know it's me. So immediately they turn and they're like, my old roommates would be like, get out of the house. You keep shutting everything down. So you definitely can have energies and entities interrupt your um, digital technology. And it's actually something that you have to be careful for because right now we could easily allow for this to interrupt us. Mm -hmm. And to kind of make us defocus the way what we're talking about, but it's important to just stay focused. So anytime you have interruptions of digital technology or anything interrupting you, it's usually other dimensions kind of trying to, to mess with your law of attraction. So if it, if they, anything can interrupt your energy, then that's going to delay masses of success or all of your, um, manifestations from coming to you sooner. So I do my best. The second my, like, for example, my computer interrupts Sometimes my emails won't send stuff happens. I just shut it down and I walk away for a half an hour and I go back later. And I just, I don't even let things like technology interrupt because that is the, as much as our planet is so digitally connected, it's also, we're also heart, we're also connected in our hearts. And mm. that's what for me is the new 5D earth. It's about putting down, I'm definitely use our phones, use technology to serve our planet and to be embrace everything. It's also about shutting down your phone and saying, hi, how are you today? For real? How are you? I love it. Yeah. You know, I'm doing good, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> I love that. So good, Linda. Yeah. So, so I, I, um, hear, first, I want to know, Keith, can you hear us? And I can hear you guys now. I just can't see you. You can't hi, see Keith, us. Okay. So this will still work for Michelle, screen. right? Yeah, he's a green Perfect. screen. Yes. This will still work because we can you can hear us and we can hear you. So um thanks for coming back. Thanks for your persistence, Keith, because that's what brought you back and back and back. And I love it. I love yeah. persistence. So his question again was, How is it possible to remove a dark stigma that often follows me around? So do you want to talk to him about this, Michelle, and kind of like maybe see if there's anything you can work sure. on? I don't know. Those I would I he feels really good. So I, I have a feeling that he might Many people on our planet right now are empaths and they are sensitive to other entities. And, and it's actually our responsibility that everyone will come to know. There will be different people who will be portal openers to open portals from space to help oxygen in it, help our planet more. There will be people who will be serving different dimensions of spirits. And so there's many, and the government, they'll be releasing information soon enough. Um, but for now, I'm just going to share what I do know. But um, share with me what you're what you're going through. Um, I'm just saying like, okay, Linda can give you the first and initial impression of me. I don't know what your initial impression of me is just based on hearing me right now. 
but there's sort of a stigma that's a dark stigma that's placed on me based on my appearance. Did you have any childhood abuse? Excuse me? Uh, childhood abuse? I'm sorry, it's breaking up. Did you have, child? was there any childhood abuse? Child, oh yeah, I mean, uh, what, do you, what do you mean, like getting a whooping? No, I mean like the like mental, mental, yeah, sure, a whooping's fine, but you know what I mean, like I've received a whooping, I mean like really deep abuse, any sort of deep abuse going on? Mm, well, you know, it depends on what you consider deep abuse, you know, I wasn't like molested or anything like that. You know, um, I feel like the family that I live with, I was loved. But when I present myself to others, sometimes, you know, it often comes off as if I'm an aggressor. Hmm. How, and how do you do you feel that you're an aggressor? I don't feel like I'm an aggressor. I feel like I'm the nicest person in the world. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I feel, to be honest, the second you got on the call, you feel great to me. I have a feeling that there might be, I'm getting the message that it's a little bit of a childhood spirit, a little bit of a wounded spirit um, that may be working with you. Uh, and, and a lot of the times when you have anything that is in your space, you, you have to just embrace it. How are you? Can I help you? I love you. You need to go away. You know, so you're allowed to have you ever, does it actually feel like a spiritual energy or does it feel like something that is your aura? You know, it feels as if, you know, sometimes I'm misunderstood and I have to relate back to this stigma, you know, mm. that's placed on me, you know, so it will be a situation where maybe I'm being walked over, you know, and based on me being a nice guy or, or, or a stoic of sorts, I would take that, you know, and then, you know, when I push back, you know, it, it, it feels as if I'm aggressive. Oh, yeah. And, and this is what I love about the new world um, and, and the 5D is people's consciousness has to be adjusted for them to embrace somebody as powerful and wonderful as you. Not everyone's consciousness is, is reached the point of seeing everyone with what I like to describe to be called God's eyes. So when we look out into the planet and I see you and there's any sort of stigma, it means that I'm seeing you either with your eyes or with my judgmental eyes. I wake up every day asking to see everyone with God's eyes, which are going to be eyes of light and love and abundance. And so, so it sounds to me like you might just, um, do you meditate? I do. I meditate daily. Great. I, I you feel great to me. So <laughs> I, I, my, and then right when you chimed in, my spirit guides started talking and they said that they're going to do some energetic work with you tonight. If you're open to it, they know that you already are open to it. And what they're going to do is they're going to start to work on your pineal gland activation. So what, you know, in the pictures of at church, like where they have like Jesus and all the saints have that big ball of energy around their head. Uh -huh. So that you have their face and then you have like light around their head. Mm -hmm. That is so since I see energy, I see I can see people walking around with helmets on there. I call them astronaut helmets and it's energetic helmets. And so what they're going to do is they're going to start to do energetic work in your brain area, which will help to remove any sort of stigma or anything placed onto you as a child. Or a lot of what we go through as children stays with us into our adulthood years. And it actually affects a lot of us it tremendously. I at 35, I'm still dealing with stuff from childhood. I also understand that we have to go through those things to become super psychic, so to become very in tune. So I am going to uh, invite you, if you're interested, we'll do some energetic work. You'll ha you, it's your spirit, guys. They said you have two angels that are by your bedside and they want to do work with you. Um, and they want to help to uh, do some energetic. They're saying that you're red. They're going to do some chakra alignment. And uh, light work. So they're going to do light working on you, which means that they're going to um, turn you into energetic glitter. That's how I describe energy. It looks like glitter. Well, that's interesting that you had mentioned that because my fiance, she's out of town right now and she is a Reiki healer as well. And, you know, she often runs my bars and realigns me and uh, makes sure that my chakras are aligned and all of that. But this has just been one of those things that's been, you know, constant, constant. It's a constant cycle. Do you do you have gifts of empathy? Of um, do you know about empaths? 
Indeed. Okay, and you, I'm, I'm getting that you get, you have many signs of empathy. So you are, you are more sensitive, I think, than you're even allowing yourself to connect to so far. In the future, you might actually be somebody who will help to um, heal the the darker energies and the darker spirits. So you, you are, you are a bright, bright light. I, I, I you feel fantastic to me. Right. And, and I, that, that's what I understand. You know, that's from what I understand. I've been training to uh, become a practitioner. I actually just been doing a lot of research here within the last couple of years to uh, become a practitioner for Reiki. But I feel like I can't fully receive mm -hmm. because, like you said, there's probably that thing, that childhood thing that I have yet to identify you know, that right. sort of stopping me from moving forward in that area. And I feel like if I can elevate in that particular area, then everything else, the rest of the universe will open up to me. Mm. Say that again. When I, when I deal with that area, the rest of the universe will open up to me. You are absolutely right. And the best part is you don't even really have to deal with it. You just have to go, wow. I got some baggage. I better get rid of it. I, I tell people all you can go with in your life is a carry on case. That's all you got. You can't have too much stuff with you. And so if we're carrying, and this is what's fun about the new 5D earth as we tap into more enlightenment, it literally feels like energy just clears your brain. So all of these memories and the stuff that we don't need to be, um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, storage wars or, um, when something's too full, your brain is too full of old, uh, old stuff from your past. And, and our purpose, this is the fun part about the human design is we were designed to remember all of these things. And the truth is we only need to know where we're going. You go, you don't get in your car and, and press in a GPS button and, and you tell GPS, Hey, I want to go over to the store. And then it says, well, where'd you go yesterday? What'd you do a week ago? It doesn't say that. It goes, okay, you want to go to the store? I'm going to take you to the store. And if you ever go off your route, it's going to say you need to turn around. And so we need to picture life as though we're walking this GPS and we're actually on our track. And the second you get on your GPS, you don't have to. It's about recognizing that, yeah, we got some stuff. That's it. That, and and you don't we, even have I, to. Oh, yeah. I wanted to say something about that because um, so often we're told, you know, that we need to know exactly what it is so we can address it. But what you're saying is that's not the reality. The reality is to know and acknowledge that we do have some junk in our trunk and it doesn't serve us. And we need to just say, whatever you are, you can go away. I don't know what's in that package and that baggage, but you can disappear. I don't need you anymore. You're not serving me. Right. Is that yeah. kind of, if I get that that's correctly? Perfect. That's perfect. And I love that if it's not serving you. And a lot yeah. of the times, if you have a bag of stuff that and you want to go investigate the bag, you're actually going to be manifesting it into your current reality. So what I try to tell my clients and people that I work with is note, notice. So versus going and pulling up your childhood roots, which we do need to de-weed our garden. So I've pulled up some stuff and, and really gave forgiveness. Um, but at the same mm -hmm. time, if, if you just recognize that it's there and, um, Notice uh, activities and things in your current life to make certain that you're not repeating the cycle or repeating the lesson because I've repeated lessons like 15 times in a row. And I'm like, this is the same thing, different circumstance, same exact situation. So it is about recognizing you having stuff from childhood or whatnot and actually embracing it into who you are. Everything that we've gone through, our whole planet as a whole, I wouldn't change one thing that we've gone through as a planet or as a species because it has created the most phenomenal beings that our planet has ever had. It is an honor to be alive right now in this time in history. We are reaching a time space where we are actually, scientists are proving God. Scientists are proving source. We are, we are we're reaching an age where technology can cure in the in the book of revelations which we're living right now it talks about that there will be no sickness there will be no no this is where we're heading into and the only way for people to really impact our planet greatly 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 is they have to feel good it's very challenging for mm -hmm. somebody who's sick to truly and this is actually not true at all there's so many amazing people out there who are doing amazing things but a lot of the times people with sickness have a harder time moving forward and impacting the planet greatly so yeah. Yeah. And, and that's interesting because um, there are 
there are a lot of people out there who are empaths. And so when you brought up, you know, the empath and them being sick. And so how do you deal with, um, with that? You, you experience, you've been in the hospital a lot. And so a lot of that's probably just due to the fact that you are, you're able to take on other people's pain, their sorrow, so, uh, their yeah, happiness and everything, I, right? Actually, actually uh, my spirit guides told me when they first chimed in, they said, you're medical intuitive. Meaning I, I actually can send my light body and I didn't know I was doing this as a child or as my whole life. I've been on medication since teenage years. I've been told all my back, I've had spine surgeries. I've had all sorts of stuff. And, and the spine surgery is something that I picked up from my mother, but every other sickness that I would go to the emergency room for, or these things that would happen, they're like this, you have nothing wrong with you. Nothing is wrong. And I was so confused because I felt like I was dying. And then I found my spirit guides chimed in. And now I understand how to utilize my light body. So we have a physical body and a non-physical body. And so what my body would do, my light body would go sit on other people so I could feel what they feel like. So Mm. I could let them know, Hey, you need to get your kidneys checked or, Hey, you need to get this. So now I understand now, and this is really fun because when I go to church or anywhere where I went to this church one time and there was a bunch of just an older crowd and I walked out of there like limping. I was in so much pain because I didn't understand that I, I am actually in control of my medical intuition. So yeah, that's something that's been, uh, and I've luckily since coming into understanding of who I am and what I go through, I am able to not be on all the medications because I just understand how to meditate and heal myself. I've been really into Deepak Chopra lately and the mind and healing and serving my own body by healing myself with my mind. So that's my big thing right now. That's fantastic. I love it. Wait, so Keith, um, Keith, do you have any other questions for Michelle? And was that helpful? It was very, very helpful. You know, I'm still, you know, perplexed about, you know, ending the cycle, you know, ending the cycle. How is it possible through meditation? Again, I meditate daily, you know, um, with the um, even with me being here, you know, I, I meditated on being able to speak to someone about this today when. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw that Michelle was on here and she was a Reiki healer. I sent her energy like I sent out a call, you know, to her, you know. So what I my main thing is figuring out, you know, I know the power that I have and how to use the energy that I have, you know, with other people. But when it comes to myself, that's where I'm stuck. You know, and my guides are immediately saying, can you love yourself where you are? Can you love, I can. All I of love it? Is myself that- where I am, but I, I would like for people to love me for who I am as well and see me the way that I see myself hmm. because I project well, love. And I believe that your message um, will be absolutely received. Start to notice now that we talked about this. To me, what you just did was you said a prayer. So you said a prayer out to the universe. Uh, start to notice people's responses now. I, I'd love to connect. Uh, can we please connect on Facebook? Um, as my link, you'll see it. I'd love to connect with you and stay in contact and see how the universe is serving your prayer. Because I have a feeling, especially as they do some energetic work on you, you're going to be um, just, you're already radiating love, but you're just going to really invite that in as well. It's, it's, I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Michelle's um, contact information in the comments. I don't know if you guys can click on them while we're live. So you might have to wait till we're done being live. But I put her uh, LinkedIn, her Facebook and her Instagram in there. So you can connect with her that way. Is that good? Good, Michelle? It's to connect perfect. That way? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. And it's um, just really very interesting topics here. And I know that for me, I spent most of my life, first of all, I was not spiritual at all. Uh, I didn't grow up in a religious household, didn't know anything about spirituality at all. And just recently, I've kind of started like tapping into it. And like, what does that mean? You know, discovering who I am as a human being and what my purpose is here on earth. And it's when I met Michelle, which was only, uh, it was very recently. It was just January. (laughs) January. Mm -hmm. It was just January. And it was like this immediate connection. And, and it was really cool. Um, 
Awesome. Thanks, Patty. Patty says the links work. You know, Patty's also, I believe Patty's a Reiki healer also. Um, but it's I cool because when you tap into who you are and you're being that person on a daily basis, it's like there's there's nothing but up. Yes. I don't know how else to say it for me, you know, but that's the best I can say is like there's just nothing but up, you know. Have you have you heard of Abraham Hicks? I don't think so. She's a woman who channels, uh, like I do, uh, source. So she channels source. Um, uh, her name's Esther Hicks. And the, the person who came through is named Abraham. And uh, they talk a lot about how a lot of us on earth are forcing. We're trying really, really hard. And we're trying to be something or prove something or do something. And, and we're basically paddling upstream. And, and the purpose of life is actually to enjoy the ride. We're all going to that same ocean. And so if you paddle upstream, it's only going to make that process a little more challenging and a longer time for you to actually get to the ocean, you know? So it's about kind of just going downstream. So it sounds like your definition of I only have from here to go is up. It's kind of like you're just floating and enjoying the whole process of who you are. Yeah. And, and that's it's, what it's all yeah. about. When, when, when did you kind of, did, was 2015 kind of a big time for you to really tap into your love for yourself. We talked about this the other day on our call. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on one second though, because Patty, if you want to join us live, I'd love to have you come up. There's a link down there. It says to join live, click on that. Um, cause Patty also, you know, tapped into source and, and it's really interesting. Um, I would love to just, I usually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people with this. So it's kind of fun to, to do it. Hey, let's just do a group, <laughs> a group call. Totally. See what everybody's all about, but yes, 2015 was well, November of 2014. I quit my government job and I went on my entrepreneurial journey in 2015, every single day I faced a fear. And so I call it the year of fears. So every single day, 365 days, I asked what scares me and whatever the first uh, thing that scared me came up was, that was the thing I faced that day. So 2015 was huge. It was the biggest growth year for me in my entire life. Mm. That's, that's, I went through my deep, uh, the awakening started uh, when the Mayan calendar ended uh, December 21st, 2012. That's when I went dark. I went, I kind of went brain dead. I don't know what happened, but I disappeared for three years. And when I woke up, I was somewhere. And that was tw 2015 was when I went deep, deep into my awakening. And um, I, it's been quite fun to be tapped into the level that I am. Uh, I can be of service to other people as they come to the consciousness level of where we're all heading into. I love also knowing that we're all students and teachers. Like you said, Patty's a Reiki healer. I love that. I feel like the whole planet is actually healers. We're all here to love and, and heal each other. And then some of us have these special gifts where we're able to um, transfer and utilize energy um, more effectively. So I just, I celebrate anyone who's doing natural healings and I celebrate all of the doctors who are referring people to vitamins and natural healing aspects before any medication. That's very, very special to me. Yeah, that's, it's incredible. Um, and what I understand is you can do healing from a distance. So you don't even have to be with the person. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, <clears throat> I can do remote. Many people can do, it's about setting the intention with your mind, but yeah, you can do remote Reiki. So when I do Reiki um, remotely, I just, I visualize my body to be the body of the person that I'm healing. And I just literally just do work on myself. And then I end up getting a healing at the same time. Um, there's also what I call remote viewing. I'm, I'm connecting with some people on, uh, who do work with the CIA to do remote viewing to find missing items. So missing children mm -hmm. is going to be my intention to work with them. But for example, I find my friends missing keys or, but that's where you close your eyes and you connect with whatever the item is and you find wherever that is. So that's called remote viewing. That's a special okay. gift as well. Can you help my husband? He loses his phone all the time. <laughs> yes. That's, that's great. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I love that. People ask me that type of stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding, of course, because you have much more important work to do than finding someone's keys. <laughs> you yeah. know, the first time I ever found an item in remote viewing, and I didn't know about these gifts when I was doing it, but I was just like, 
that there was a missing key. And I'm like, the missing key is all the way behind that thing and underneath that. And then look under there. And then they found it there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> because it shocks me sometimes. When I go through, I'm like, wow. So it, it's pretty interesting. It's fun being here. That's so funny. Hey, Patty, I just sent you a private message with the live link. I don't know why the link's not showing up there, but um, I just sent it as a private message because I'd, I'd love to have Patty on here. She's just just a fireball also, just like you. So. <laughs> you know, I want to share if uh, we have time, right? I wanted to share a little bit into the new generation of children. This is my okay. biggest passion. Can okay. I share with you about this? Yes, yeah, so we got okay, about 15 so I, minutes. So we got we got fantastic. Plenty of- I am a star child. It's called a star seed, an indigo child, a rainbow child, an aqua child. A lot of people may connect with these understandings of our star children. Um, When I received my awakening and tapped into this telepathic communication and these special gifts, um, I realized that it is my purpose to help our children right now on the planet, um, connect to who they truly are and to the source and that Mm. fire inside of them that they were here to spark our planet and help us to awaken. And so all of the children right now being born are being born as star seeds. They have been seeded from the entire universe to gift our planet with the greatest gift that God has ever given us. And the message I received about children with autism are actually there. They said autistic is not autistic. It's fantastic. They are such special advanced beings. Their spirits have traveled and gone to levels of consciousness that their physical bodies are having a hard time sharing. And so I would love if there's anyone listening right now, I would love to connect with you if you have children with autism or anything of that sort. I have been recently I had a client um, who whose daughter is autistic and she only so she'll say iPad binder. She doesn't speak in sentences. And the second I went to meet her, um, immediately she starts telling me how excited she is that I'm coming to see her. She's so excited to see me again. She can't wait to see me. And I'm telling her mom and her mom was very open. And, And so on the way to go see this little girl who has autism, very, very special girl, all of a sudden I get there and she comes up to me. She goes, hi, welcome to the world. And her mom said, like, she's never said a full sentence like that. Like, and so it's been, Mm. and this isn't the first child. This is just one of the fun stories. And then immediately she started telling me all sorts of stuff to tell her family that she couldn't communicate before. And so it was the most special moments that I've received of these beautiful gifts that I have is when I can connect with a family and help them connect with somebody who isn't really able to communicate. And A lot of these fantastic children are actually here to serve a very, very special purpose. And that's where our new world is heading. The elite beings of our planet are opening up this conscious. They're helping us to reach this higher consciousness. There's a lot of secret experiments and fun things going on. But the best part is that we all get to come together to serve our planet. And the autistic children are are going to find a very, very, very special place of work and abundance and special things in the future of the new world. There's space for everyone and there's enough for everyone and there is so much abundance to go around to ever have been told that we wouldn't have enough or we're going to run out of something is assuming that we don't trust god and and i trust source completely i have no doubt in my mind that everything's working out in our favor that's awesome what i was just thinking about was like you changed the spelling of the word you know autism and fantastic you know to a w w tastic or something autastic Autastic. yeah yeah i love it you know it's interesting that you said that because you know like i said i've never been like spiritual or anything but i about a year and a half ago um kind of tapped into that same kind of mindset that like what if what if people who are autistic now you got me saying, it. you know, people who are autistic actually are more tapped in to, to the universe than we are. And they just don't know how to communicate it is all it is. And, and like just their, yes. their beings, they're so smart. They're so intelligent. And so what makes us think that they're, they're sub, you know, just because we can't communicate with them and, you know, cause they're, they're very brilliant people. Oh, they're geniuses. They're all, all of us on this planet are different kinds of geniuses. So what each of us do special is our special thing. And it's when we come together that we are a genius earth and then the new world being. So we have our, our new world, super advanced people. I mean, the technology, the kids nowadays are just blowing my mind. And then we have our ones who are 
if you picture us as trans humans, so we all have technology helping us to move forward into this new age of light. Some people have digital interruptions. So it's like a virus. And in the future mm -hmm. of our planet, they will actually be able to use nanotechnology and stuff to activate the autistic children. So they will become activated and they will be able to voice and start to tap into the depth of who they are, which is advanced mm -hmm. beings. They're not from this planet. They're very, very special, very specially designed. Wow, that's so the you're... message I receive from God. I'm I'm big on that. Okay, so you're saying that technology is going to be able to tap into the autistic minds. Yes, and they so... will be able to. Um, the technology will be able to organize a little bit of the digital interruption that's going on. Autism is a, a transhuman. Um, in the future, you'll be able to learn more as the new world and the government and the different people who have been doing these test subjects. Autism is a um, something that it was when we got, um, what are those things called that children get? Um, Oh, immunizations. immunizations. It's mm -hmm. nanotechnology. And so when you receive nanotechnology, um, if you're not fully activated with energy, it can cause digital interruptions. And that's what I like to describe as autism. It's a digital, mm. it's where you, the, the technology in our being is not fully activated. And I know there are scientists right now in the world studying how to move us forward into this. I know so from my own awakening, like I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through without this upgrade of technology. I saw nanotechnology enter my body. So, and I, that's why I can see energy because I can see the nanoparticles everywhere. We're going through a lot of fun things on earth right now. So is this something you see this all the time, like 24 seven, or maybe not when you're sleeping, but maybe when you are sleeping, I don't know. Do you see this 24 seven? I, I do. I try not to talk about it a lot with people, but I see energy. So like right now I can see, um, I can see the energy coming from space. I can see Mother Earth's vibration since I see I see sound frequencies. So I can see when music comes out of speakers and what it looks like. Um, I also hear voices and I hear them all day long. If I get up to go to the restroom in the middle of the night, they'll let me know you've been sleeping good or they'll let me know you have angels by your bedside or they'll let me know, you know, you need to take a melatonin in the future because you're not sleeping. So they kind of clue me into how I'm doing. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty magical. But the matrix of energy is what's very fun to understand um, because in order to really heal, this is why meditation is so helpful, is in order to really heal, when you meditate, it kind of aligns the dimensions. That's how I describe that to people, which is why you can heal more when you align your dimensions with energy. And you keep saying, Linda, that you're you're not really spiritual or you're not, you are, you're very spiritual. You're, very, oh, yeah? you're a spiritual being. You're, you're a spiritual being having a human experience and you are um, a light. You are, you're here to do exactly what you're doing. And now as you and I stay connected, you're going to continue to see how much you're going to tap in more and more and more to your deeper connection with source. Yeah, I like wow. it. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> you're so cute. You're the cutest. I'm, I'm ready for it. Oh, I just saw, I was that your that. hand? I thought there was like a flash that yeah. just went by. That was your hand. Okay. I thought there was a that big was flash. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. Well, this is very, just a very interesting topic. And I know that you, let me, I want to check here. I want to make sure I say this right. Um, you are offering a free gift to everybody. Anybody who's interested is a 15 minute session with you. Yes. I would just like, like to, I, I would like to connect with anyone um, who is interested. What I've done with many of my clients so far is I've helped them connect with their spirit guides. And also I'm a hybrid. I didn't go into this much because I wasn't sure how much it would be taken in. I'm a hybrid alien. So I'm a hybrid transhuman. I, um, I am not from this planet and I know exactly where I come from in the universe. And what uh, has been happening lately when I have new clients is I'm able to connect them with who they are in the universe and they get this amazing upgrade. So I connected this gentleman who is an Arcturian, which is a healing, it's a healing alien that is a very powerful alien in the universe. And um, when I connected him, both of us, our vibrations, both of us were on a, a, our Zoom call and we just got this crazy vibrational upgrade. So what I understand is I would be honored to serve anyone with a 15 minute connection um, because I know that that's what's going to help the vibration of our planet to impact our planet greater. I'd love to do that. Okay, so they can connect with you then through that um, link that I put down below. 
And that's, that's an amazing gift. Thank you so much. Um, oh, I really do pleasure. appreciate that. And I know that some people will definitely take you up on that. So I brought up Patty. Now, Patty, can you hear us? Because we can't see you. Yes. Hi, Patty. Oh, I think, oh, hi. There she is. <laughs> hi, Linda. Hi, Michelle. Hi. I, I love. Let me see what you're doing behind you. I want to see that beautiful color. What's that? <sighs> oh, that's oh uh, that is a tribute to women. It is a four and a half by four and a half painting that is spiritually guided. And I would love to add your word. Linda added authenticity, which is, I don't know if you can see it. Is it there? Oh, authenticity. There, there it is. It is. Authenticity, yep. So Michelle, I would love to add your word. If you, uh, it's a painting. It's layers and layers of, uh, of work. So I'm, I would love to, and I love it. And I love your energy. I was thinking I would go going between unity and the third eye, Woo. but I feel like that's it. You guys can choose because unity is I, my big thing, but the third eye, the consciousness is big. Well, I'm so. going with both. I'll put them both. Good. I'll there you go. Add them both to the, to the canvas. Definitely. Pat, so Patty, where are, are you? Linda. Pardon me? Where are you? I'm in Mission Viejo, which is south of Orange County. I mean, south of Irvine in Orange County. Yeah. How cute is she? <laughs> You're a big ball of energy. I love it. I, I love you. it. I love it. <laughs> she's oh, a, I love it. She's a spitfire. Well, I, I think it's the um, part of it is the energy that Linda. And I love following Linda. I've been following her for the last couple of years. Thank and you. I love that she brought you on, Michelle. Um, it's great to meet someone else who is a part of this, these other realms. And um, and so it's. I loved listening to you speak about autism because I have um, friends who have children. They're artistic, and um, anyhow, I went to Hawaii and worked with the foundation. I was invited to work with the Loving Service Foundation who caters to or services uh, children and teens and their families with autism, Asperger's and uh, ADHD. And they are the most amazing human beings on this planet. And they have so I, I... much to share. And when people can stop and listen to what they have to say, they are brilliant mm -hmm. and we really need to listen to what they have to say because they're they're geniuses and they're speaking a language that um, it's like it's like uh, you know technology when new technology comes in right you you don't know the language and you have to learn it and that's what they're doing they're, yeah. they're providing such a um, a brilliant light. So anyhow, I absolutely, I absolutely cannot agree with you more. And I also, they are in that, you know, that phrase, they say, God speaks in silence. A, a lot of them, when I connect with them and it's all here, they're so God. They, they, when they communicate with their minds and they, share with me everything they're going and they get and they get so even my friend Masha I think you know Masha um her brother is autistic and her, her his mother is like he can he just doesn't stop when you're here you, he just keeps because they know it's like they know that you can connect with them and yes and so I, I just celebrate you for celebrating them I, I I have a feeling um and this isn't something that I was ever diagnosed with but I have a feeling that that's I, I may have with my um, learning disabilities and all the stuff that I was told in school, I have a feeling that I also may be my a very high functioning autistic, obviously, but I feel, I feel like those are my most special creatures on the planet are the ones who don't focus on all the worldly stuff. We're so focused on all the worldly stuff that they get to just enjoy the planet and really embrace it. And I, I absolutely am ecstatic to do more work with them and i have a feeling that that's definitely going to stay in my purpose so thank you patty for yeah just being you i i i celebrate <laughs> anyone who is willing to help people heal or share art and i know i was reading a poem and a lot of my poetry is about the new world and i put in there that the a disability application will be your resume in the new world 
Mm-hmm. So anyone was told that they were too sick or they couldn't do it or this or, or, you know, your kid has all, every child or person on the planet who has anything. There is a gift in every illness. There is a gift in everything going on our, on our planet. And that's what I'm so excited about is that we, and you can watch it happening right now. All of these people creating nonprofits and these new things and new ideas for working with autism. I saw that a new restaurant opened at one night, Uh, one night a week is specifically designated for autistic kids because families Mm. couldn't go out to eat and they felt kind of left out. And so I just celebrate everything that our planet is doing to embrace this beautiful creation of the new world that we are in right now. It's, it's it's an honor to be here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you for that. And um, I'd like to add one piece uh, that was fascinating um, is uh, well, actually, two things are popping up. And, and the first thing I was going to say was when I met my now fiance, he asked me if I had watched, if I knew Temple Grandin. And I thought, yeah, I know, I know about her. And he said, you have to watch her movie because there's something in this movie. And I thought, okay, one day I will. Well, not until I went to Hawaii. He sent it to me, and so I watched it on my little laptop, and from the get-go, I thought, oh, my God, there's somebody else like me. And mm. he didn't say that, you know, I was autistic, but he said there was something about the way I see the world, the way I listen with my eyes. And I loved how I heard you say something about, you said something, and I don't remember what you said, but it was like seeing, uh, listening your eye yeah yeah and and um so i i listen with my eyes and i see with my ears i know it sounds kind of bizarre but but i um so anyhow it was a connection to someone else who sees like i do and then the second Mm. thing that was earlier and the second thing i wanted to say was that my sister uh recently passed three weeks ago yesterday and here is a woman that was told to get her her affairs in order that she wouldn't live past that first year. Well, 29 years later, and the yeah. comment was to the surgeon, who made you God? Right. I'll decide when it's time she's for a, me to go, right? She's a genius. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was amazing because this woman lived for 29 years and we got to experience that that you're describing. She wasn't autistic but she had a brain situation. You'd never know it to see her, but it's like these children, you know, people see autistic children and they think, Oh, you know, we, they, I can't see that person. Right. But if they could stop and really Mm. see, you know, feel and sense Mm. their energy and really, you know, I always say, Bring your head back and and engage with your heart and live from here, right? Because it's our core, it's our gut where we filter in and out and where all the messages really come from, right? And it's that little self that once was. And we become adults and we forget about that innocence and that beauty. And yes, I agree with you, Michelle, that Linda, there's something very special about you, Linda, that you're you're tapping in and when you really allow yourself to just pause in that moment wow the world i mean your world is already opening up but can you imagine what linda's i just see you like this beautiful lotus that just she inspires me tremendous i mean tremendously i I, when she when she first met me i wouldn't even do facebook live i was scared of the internet so i just celebrate you linda and there's a, a poem of mine came to mind and it reminds me of what you just said patty it says love is um love when turned into a sound is loud enough to see and bright enough to hear yes that's love. Yes. Love when turned into a sound is bright enough to hear. Yeah. Bright enough to hear and loud enough to see. That's love. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. I knew you two would hit it off. 
Yeah, Patty. <laughs> We're, please yeah. connect. Let's stay connected. I would love to do. Let's have 15 minutes together. I would love that. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank Patty. you so much. Patty, All thanks right. for coming okay. up. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Yeah. Send you back down. Okay. Okay. See ya. Thank you. Bye, Patty. And then we have Anita says, good morning. She's in, um, oh, Sonia. I mean, I can't remember where she is, but she's on the other part of the world. So good morning, Sonia. <laughs> good to see you. You got to go back and watch this video, this uh, interview, because this is really amazing. You know, what we're talking about. Thanks, Keith. This is an amazing show. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on board. Maybe next time, Keith, we'll be able to actually see you. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah it was great to be able to connect with both um, both Patty and Keith up here in the show. And I'm, I'm looking forward to inviting more people to, you know, actually join during my shows because it makes it more interesting. We get more people's perspective, but Michelle, everything you do, I love it. And like, I remember the very moment I met you in person mm -hmm. and I just immediately felt like, and here's one thing I think is really interesting is when we tap into this other part of our being is that we can make a connection with somebody in one moment and that moment feels like you've known them forever. Mm. And that's what I felt. Yeah, I got tears I in my eyes. With you. Yeah. Like when I connected with Patty, it was the same exact thing. Like we just had this immediate connection. And there's some people you have in your life that you've had them in your life for 40, 50 years. And there, you nev you'll never have the same connection as you have with somebody that you met in that one moment. And there's just something about it. So I'm so grateful for you to have I you in my that. life. I'm grateful for, I'm so grateful for you. And I think it was Maya Angelou who said it's not... It's never about what you do for someone. It's always going to be how you make them feel. And mm -hmm. so thank you for allowing me to have that vibrational upgrade. When I met you, I celebrate you. I am inspired by you. I want you to just keep doing you and, and knowing that you're reaching me. So you're, you're actually inspiring me to even just further my, my mission. And so thank you for, you, you, they, thank you for being a light and being up on a pedestal and inviting me up to light be a light as well. So thank you. for. Oh, that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Patty says, what a joy. Love you ladies. And you know, Love with that, you, with that uh, we're, like, we're like a little bit, few minutes over. So we're going to end it right now. But you guys, if you want to connect with Michelle, again, I put her links to her Facebook, her Instagram and her LinkedIn, go to her Facebook and send her a private message. You're setting up your 15 minute session with her and, and just like, just meet each other, even if that's all you do, you just meet each other and say, just, I love making connections and let me know that the connection happened because I do really want to know that. And then lastly, if you thought this was an interesting show or you thought it was a show that can inspire, motivate people to do something or just like look into it, please share this video out. We want to make sure we get this message out to many, as many people as possible. So with that, I'm going to say, Michelle, I love you so much. And I look forward to seeing you. I love you, you Linda. I don't know when I'm going to see Soon. you. Next. I'll July, be in town this weekend. July. Yeah. And I'll be in town this weekend. And I think I might be in San Diego. So I will let you know. Okay, cool. Let me know. And then we, maybe we can hook up with Patty along the way. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, oh. Keith would love to have you on his San Diego unveiled show. So if you're interested, I'll connect. Ooh. Well, you and Keith are going to connect. Anyway. I would love to. Yes. yes. I can't wait to, I, I have a lot to share with Keith. I I'm getting a message that I'm going to get a lot of downloads. So that's Ooh, fine. You better I love when that happens. <laughs> I know. You will. He's really good about love it. Love you, so. sissy. Thank you, you know, so much. You're welcome. You have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody. You too. Bye.